Hey, what's up, daywalkers and fellow travelers of the night? I've been trying to make this video a couple different ways, and I think what I'm really just going to do is classic vlog style, just talk to the camera, and just tell you about a character that actually really meant a lot to me over the years, somewhat secretly, somewhat not secretly, depending on, you know, how you follow me. You may never know that I was a big fan of Ghost Rider, and I'm wearing purple shirt, by the way. He got this gifted to him from someone at his job. Um, turns out he likes the character very much, too. So there's this strong connection to Danny Ketch, the 90s Ghost Rider. I know a lot of people out there seen the Nicolas Cage movies and they're like, hey, Ghost Rider's name is Johnny Blaze. And that's true. That's one of the original Ghost Riders is Johnny Blaze. And he was like kind of the evil Knievel version, kind of this daredevil out in the circus type lifestyle and, you know, ramping off of stuff, jumping over helicopters and tanks and everything and kind of had that vibe to him in his personal life, but then also made this deal with the devil and became the Ghost Rider. And then in the 90s, Danny Ketch was the Ghost Rider. He was a young man in New York, and he was created by Howard Mackey and Javier Sataris, I believe. And the design of him is really cool. Like, he's very metal. He's always been, like, the flaming skull and everything, but the 90s Danny Ketch run was something very unique. And it came at an amazing time for characters like that, kind of anti-hero type characters, because in the 80s into the 90s, there was this, like, pool in the world of comics away from traditional superheroes even though they were still selling well and doing well but there was this like all oh, right we like these darker characters too we like characters with a little bit of grit to them batman got a little darker you know we had punisher out there who was doing great and then you had ghost rider who was like this awesome you know spirit of vengeance from hell character and they wanted to revive him and they decided well instead of telling more johnny blaze stories at least at first will do with this new character, Danny Ketch, this young guy from New York with, you know, his sister and this, you know, past that he's kind of, you know, unaware of. And it turns out Danny Ketch is the brother, like half-brother in a way, of Johnny Blaze. And I was like, that's awesome when they revealed that. And so Johnny Blaze does come into the fold. You get the Midnight Suns, you get teaming up with Blade and all these other supernatural characters. And honestly, as kids, you know, it really captured our imagination. I'm speaking about myself when I speak in the plural. Um, we have a diagnosis, you know, we have multiple personalities. It's called OSDD-1 is our personal diagnosis. And us as a child read this book and kept those comics. And turns out after our brain aneurysm rupture in 2010, that collection was still there at our mom's house. And so it was something that we had access to when we were recovering. And we had that and also coincidentally a show that we were a fan of before the aneurysm. There was reruns of Supernatural playing on like basic cable. And so that was stuff we had access to. And we got really swept up in reading this story from the 90s. Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze as brothers, you know, fighting demons and fighting the hordes of hell and Lilith and everything. And then you get into Supernatural and it's about two brothers who are fighting the hordes of hell. They meet a Lilith in the show and, uh, and among other demons and stuff. And it just had that vibe, you know, it's like this, it's very kind of like, a little bit of Western-y, but very modern. And, you know, this like uh, these myths and stories of American history kind of pulled in to the show of Supernatural and then also pulled into the comics of Ghost Rider. And there was like a really interesting, you know, a parallel but that I made between these two shows and this comic series that made me like it even more, both of them. And obviously we were fans of it in the past pre-aneurysm, but to have it and become a fan of it post-aneurysm just shows how much deep down we really connected with this material, both the show of Supernatural and of Ghost Rider. So this collection was something we had, but it was unfinished. And it was because some of the issues were really hard to find. And it wasn't even that we were collecting just the 90 plus issues of you know Ghost Rider that starred Danny Ketch, which is also still to this day the longest running series called Ghost Rider. Um, it went that many issues where it surpassed kind of some of the previous incarnations of them and nothing has touched it so far without being renumbered and stuff. So this was a really top selling book at Marvel for a long, long time. But in the end, it started selling less because they you know, were printing less. So those later issues got really hard to find. And we weren't just collecting the series. Like I said, we were collecting every appearance that Dan Ketch ever made in any Marvel comic. And we completed that collection not too long ago. And then unfortunately we had like a, a flood, a small flood thankfully, but a flood in our apartment that did damage some of the books. And a couple of them we rebought because luckily they weren't too expensive. But we just were like, we're not going to invest more and redo this again. Like, what we're going to do instead is we're going to sell the collection. So the footage you've been seeing of me going through it is actually the last footage I filmed 
of me holding this collection, this literal comic collection that transcends multiple identities that live inside of us, that go from us as a kid to us as now a 42-year-old adult. This was something that really meant something to all of us, and it was hard to get rid of it, I'll be honest. And I, more important than the money, because this was you know something I was trying to do before Ace passed, then he passed, and I just was like, I'm going to walk away from it. I don't want to go through the collection. I just want to you know, mourn you know, for, for Ace. And then when we got back to, okay, let's look at stuff we can purge and get rid of, because really the next time we move, which we do plan on moving hopefully in the next year or two, we would like to not have as much stuff. We want it to be an easier move. Hopefully to get everything to fit in the car even would be great and just buy new furniture wherever we go. And we're trying to whittle down to that for the most part. I know you can see behind me and be like, there's no way, brother. <laughs> yeah, some of these masks and stuff, they'll fold up nicely and they'll go in boxes and stuff. And trading cards, those are those don't take up a lot of room. So we are, we're whittling down and, and we're working our way towards something um, smaller, you know. Um, so for us, this is... This was, though, still hard because I, I knew what this collection represented to me, to the the identity that existed before me, um, who we call Black, you know, uh, our original host, or the original us from childhood, like, you know, Green. You know, I, I knew that everyone had some kind of stake in this collection in a way, and it was hard. It was like when we were selling our Supernatural stuff, like, it, it is. This is, like I said, these are some of the first stuff. This and some music were some of the first things that, like, really we dove into post-aneurysm. So for me, it was my first things. They were my first comics in a lot of ways. They were my, even though they weren't really our first comics, because as a kid we read X-Men and other stuff first before Ghost Rider. But for me, post-aneurysm waking up and not having that, you know, life in my head as memories or anything... This was my first stuff, my first TV shows, you know, Supernatural. My first comic books were Ghost Rider, and I became really enamored with them. So I knew how much it meant to me, but I knew that even transcended further back to other versions of us um, who started that collection. And it was it's hard to close a chapter, you know, in your life. And sometimes people say, oh, it's just a comic book collection. Who cares? And it's one that's not even super valuable or anything. It's like, yeah, maybe not, you know, money-wise, but it meant something to us, you know, like you imagine something you just have had your whole life or collected your whole life. And you, at one point you make the choice to get rid of it. It's like, yeah, you have to do it sometimes to move on or enter the next chapter or, you know, to say goodbye in some way, um, or you need money or whatever. And for us after Ace Pass, it wasn't that we needed the money that badly, but I did want to find it a good home. And luckily we were able to. So, you know, and through connections we made at our local comic store and stuff, like we were able to find this collection a good home. And, and really that's what meant more to me than what we got paid. And so we took a little bit less of what we probably valued the collection at, even though it wasn't super valued high, but we had mint. I mean, these were good copies, except for some of the ones that got water damage. But luckily those were, you know, not major, major issues. They were just, some of them were just low print issues. So we was just didn't want to deal with the hassle of trying to replace them. But for the most part, everything else was awesome and uh, and in great condition still, and and uh, and I'm 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 glad they went to someone who will now care for it as much as we did. I can tell uh, by <laughs> I can tell that it will be. So you know, th so this was just a goodbye. I just wanted to make a video, kind of showing that we had you know got rid of this collection and that uh, and that it was difficult and that sometimes in life though, as a collector, you do make these choices and. And uh, right now, I think nothing's more important than uh, getting another dog at a certain point soon, hopefully for us, and having less stuff so that when we do move again, it's just an easier move. Because I do know one thing, I will probably not spend the rest of my life in Florida. Um, I do miss where I'm from in California. And although I have to work out that of where if we move with other alters now, I can't just make decisions for all of us. Um, I really do hope we can agree that at least for me and and kind of how um my mental state of creating and everything that i just had a lot more opportunities in california yeah a lot of stuff i can do remotely and i have been behind the scenes doing a lot of that stuff but sometimes it's good when you can just go physically go into a meeting and things like that without catching a flight and stuff so for me it's it's a goal of mine and it may not be a goal i reach but it's still a goal in order to get to that goal we have to get rid of some stuff just to make a, a possible move 
um, easier, even whether we go back to California or just go somewhere else. Like, you know, we just want to make the move easier. So, um, so yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, to my Ghost Rider fans, people who follow me on this channel for some of the Ghost Rider stuff I made with Midnight Suns, you know, we did a whole series of videos. We played that video game. Like I have had a great time talking about Ghost Rider and if that's not going away, we'll still talk Ghost Rider stuff from time to time. But from the collection point of view, you know, I just wanted to show off that I did own this collection and have some kind of video you know, of it to look back on and watch whenever I miss it. <laughs> so I'm, you know, excited to edit this and get this posted uh, as soon as possible. So that way I can do that because I'm already missing it. Just talking about it. Um, the footage you see there, I probably filmed a couple months ago now, like maybe three, four months ago, maybe even a little longer. So it's taken me this long to finally get to making this intro and outro part and middle part. Um, but I've reached, I filmed this a couple times too. And I just, I don't know. I just, I wanted to just talk about you know, the Midnight Suns and, and, uh, the Midnight Massacre and all these great stories that came out of this, uh, gateways into characters like Dr. Strange and, uh, and, you know, Blade and, and all these awesome supernatural corners of the Marvel universe in Midnight Suns Unlimited. There were stories about man thing in there and werewolf by night and just really cool to just be swept up in that, in that world for the last 14 years. And then old us, before that for many years. And, uh, and even though I can't go back and just read those books whenever I want now, um, they are going to be re-releasing the Danny Ketch stuff in omnibus form. And as long as those sell well, they'll keep coming out. So we will probably digitally buy the omnibus, uh, which will probably run around 40 or 50 bucks on Kindle comics. We will probably buy that just to scratch that itch in case, because I love reading it. I mean, I must've read that run probably four or five times in its entirety. So, so to me, like, and I, I do, I get the itch every now and again to want to read that stuff. So to see it coming out in omnibus means it, it could live on in a new form. So either we'll buy the physical omnibus if we have the money or if we don't have as much to get, cause there's a lot of good omnibuses coming out, we'll probably buy the digital one and, um, and, you know, try to support it that way because we, we want them to do the whole run of it. I think it's the first like 30 issues in one omnibus which is awesome. <laughs> it's all the way up to the Midnight Sun stuff. So that's great. I, I can't wait to uh, to see everything that's uh, you know packaged in this omnibus. And I'll put a link down below if you want to pre-order it or buy it on Amazon. Uh, but if you've never given that run a shot, I, I would recommend it. If you're interested in supernatural characters and stuff like that, or that pocket of the Marvel Universe, uh, I still think it holds up. The art in that run was fantastic. Howard Mackey's scripts were really good. I really connected to the characters and I thought there was something in it for everybody. Like there was a little bit of metal in it, you know, it had that kind of vibe. There's a little bit of Western in it. Um, there was a little bit of a Americana in it in a way. Uh, it has like roots in New York, but there was these, you know, Quentin Carnival and all these uh, places that took you to other places in the, the U.S. to battle demons and monsters and, uh, you know, evil ghost riders like Vengeance and things like that. Like this really opened up the world of Ghost Rider and it took it to more than just a guy who fought, you know, goons and stuff. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, Mephisto and supernatural characters and really made him a center point for the Marvel universe when it comes to the supernatural. And it made him a, a, a key player in a lot of big events. And, you know, nothing's cooler to me than like, there was this book called Midnight Massacre where they released a poster in stores that you could buy um, or that was just put up in comic stores and stuff that had blade riding the ghost rider motorcycle and he's like smiling with his fangs and he's got his sword and the bikes on fire and i'm like how awesome <laughs> like how awesome just the images you got from those runs of those characters doing things that you normally wouldn't see those characters do it's like if it wasn't for that run i wouldn't have that iconic image of blade on the ghost rider motorcycle um and just so many other great stuff and that's just one of many uh cool things that happened in that entire run so yeah please if you'd like support the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider stuff, the first omnibus comes out soon. Link down below. And like I said, just because I might buy it in omnibus form, because that way in case I ever, you know, as the digital possibly, if I ever get that itch to read it again, I have it there. And then if I do do that, maybe we'll do some videos on it in the future where I'll have high res scans of it, you know, because of the, I can do screen grabs of the Kindle version. And I can show off, you know, I'll try to white out some of the, the text and stuff, but I can show off some of the artwork and uh, and discuss some of those, the you know, those storylines and everything. So, yeah, that, that could be fun. That could be a way to, to keep that passion going in a new form um, without, you know, 
more clutter, I guess. So let me know what you think. Uh, is there anything out there that you collected this hardcore that you've spent years trying to finish? Like, I'd love to hear that down below. And is there anything, like, are you a fan of Ghost Rider? Have you read any of the 90s stuff, the Dan Ketch stuff? Uh, you know, have you read the Johnny Blaze stuff? Like, do you have a favorite Ghost Rider? Are you a Robbie Reyes fan? Like, whatever it is, let me know down below. I love talking Ghost Rider, and I don't want that to stop just because this collection is gone. We'll find new ways to, you know, bring this character around and talk about him. Um, I just won't be able to show off this, you know, awesome collection anymore. But we have it all in one place now, and now you guys get to see me going through the boxes, and hopefully you enjoyed that as much as as heartbreaking as it was for me to film it, <laughs> but, uh, but also bittersweet because those comics are in good hands now and someone's really loving them and taking care of them. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk more in the comments below. See y'all in hell. Peace. Mm -hmm.